for a peak experience. Still to come, we conclude our feature on The Killing Fields, and our special series on sports medicine looks at preventing injuries. You permed your hair for that wonderful look. Now, how can you get back the soft, natural feel of your hair? Permission for perms in particular. New Permission Shampoo and Conditioner for the particular needs of permed hair with moisturizers to leave it feeling naturally soft and silky. Intricate cut. It becomes the most valuable piece of metal you could own. A key. And when it's ready to protect a part of your world, don't throw that security away. Protected with TV Vet Secret Mini Tag, they can speed your lost keys safely back to you. When you receive your tags in the mail, please send a donation. TV Vet Secret Mini Tags. Use them, count on them, support them. Hi, I'm Fred Latrimo. I do the mornings on 14 CFUN, and I'd like to tell you about something new at our radio station. On CFUN, you'll now hear light rock with less talk. Songs by all your favorite artists, like Billy Joel, this is my life. The Eagles, The Beatles, Simon and Garfunkel. So for light rock with less talk, turn to 14 on your AM dial. The new 14 CFUN. Coming up, Marion's final look at the killing fields. And Peter Clemente with the latest weather, but first, our nightly news reel. 29 people have been injured in a cloud of exploding gas and chemicals at a West German oil refinery. The explosion also triggered a huge fire at the plant near Cologne. The fire sent a burning cloud more than 500 meters into the air. Company spokesmen say a pipe carrying liquid gas broke, causing a mixture of ethylene gas, naphtha, and other chemicals to explode. They stress the gas and fumes are non-toxic. The U.S. Midwest was gripped by extreme cold today, and in some places there was also snow and ice. What happened at Lansing, Michigan this morning shows just how dangerous those conditions can be. Watch. The driver of the truck that was hit suffered a fractured leg. A six-mile stretch of highway was closed in one direction for seven hours. A helicopter used in the filming of the CBS TV series Airwolf crashed today, killing one person and injuring another. Officials say the crash occurred at the Sun Oil Refinery in a canyon about 50 kilometers northwest of downtown L.A. Airwolf is an adventure drama series in its second year of production. A hijacker got a surprise today when the plane he commandeered landed in Orlando, Florida. He thought they were in Havana. The hijacker was described as a Cuban boatlift refugee who had been jilted by his lover. He was charged with air piracy. The hijacker had threatened to ignite a can of gasoline aboard the plane, but gave up when he was duped into thinking they had landed in Cuba. Tonight, Marion concludes your three-part series on the new motion picture, The Killing Fields. This powerful movie opened today in Vancouver. It explores a special friendship between a New York Times journalist and his Cambodian interpreter. This is a true story, and Marion says it promises to be a strong contender for some Oscars. Well, Marion, you've spoken to the actors and to the actual journalists. What do you have for us tonight? Well, today, Dorian, I've got segments of an interview that I did with the British filmmakers of The Killing Fields, Chariots of Fire Oscar winner, producer David Put and director Ronald Joffe. And The Killing Fields was a labor of love for both of these men. Putman has wanted to make the film since 1980 after reading reporter Sidney Schoenberg's article in the New York Times magazine, The Death and Life of Dith Prawn. Both the article and the film chronicle Schoenberg's friendship with his interpreter Prawn during the conflict in Cambodia in the 70s. If the war keeps going like this, the future could be very bad. What do you think? I don't know. I don't know either. What initially attracted you to, to the film was the human relationship, not necessarily the telling of a story about a war, but the human relationship. What is it about the relationship with these two men that, that caught your eye so much in, in expanding? For me, it was, in a way, this, the classicism and simplicity. 
of the relationship. Well, I'm, I find myself under a constant pressure, and I'm sure Roland is as well, to make films about issues. People say, well, you know, shouldn't you make a film about unemployment, shouldn't you? You can't make a film about an issue. What you can do is make a film about people uh, and a crisis in their lives, and then hope that the background to that particular crisis is something uh, cinematographic. In the end, that's what Gone with the Wind is, and that's what most great, that's what War and Peace is. The friendship was so full, too, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, that was, it was, it was more than just a friendship so that you might have between two people in a town or between people who work together. Um, it was a friendship that straddled the earth, and that was so extraordinary about it. I mean, it was two different cultures. Shanberg and Prawn were among the very few journalists who remained in Cambodia's capital, Phnom Penh, after the communist revolutionary Khmer Rouge took command in 1975. When things got very serious, Shanberg managed to be evacuated, but Prawn did not. And Shanberg spent the next five years searching for his friend, who did survive but suffered greatly at the hands of the Khmer Rouge. Did you run into any obstacles wanting to do this film? We want to forget Cambodia. We, we don't want to remember that. Nope. Uh, the American military were incredibly helpful. We couldn't have made the film without them. The Thai military were even more helpful. Uh, and were a, a, a factor and a part of the film. Uh, no, not at all. I think that people got swept along to a very great degree with the fact it was a story worth telling. Because, again, as you said, because of the human element. Accuracy was important in this film. You went to Thailand right on the Cambodian uh, border to film it. I can't believe it was filmed for $15 million only. Tell me a bit about the uh, problems with the location. It, well, logistically, the film was a nightmare to make because we had to move every single day for 11 and a half weeks. We were shooting on a new location every day and moving this army. 80 uh, trucks. Yes, we had 80 trucks moving us. It was, it was and you quite phenomenal. actually went out and tried to look for some Khmer Rouge, people who could speak it, Cambodians are in this? Well, just finding Cambodians was an incredible problem. And then finding them, we found them then in refugee camps, then applying for the permits to get them temporarily out of their refugee camps so they could be in the film. I, the, the bureaucracy involved was immense. He doesn't know how many they expect an attack today. Where's your commander? What's he doing there? No, no. How many mortar rounds do you have? In the end, only people matter. Policies and politics don't. And you've got to be jolly sure that a policy is worthwhile that involves the potential death of one human being. And I think that maybe the film just will jolt people into realizing you, that policies aren't made in an abstract way around green base tables, because there's some point impact on human beings' lives. And they say, you've got to be damn sure you know what you're doing when you're messing around with other people's lives. The Killing Field is a magnificent film. As producer David Putnam did with both Chariots of Fire and Local Hero, he's produced a simple story about people that is both emotional and realistic. Okay, Marion, what have you got coming up for, for us next week? Okay, well, on Monday, Doriana, we will be talking to Lord John Brayborn, who's the producer of A Passage to India. And on Wednesday and Friday, I've got such supreme dancers' interviews with them, such as Sid Charisse and Leslie Caron, and they'll be talking about the documentary film That's Dancing, and that's all next week. Sounds great. Thank you, Marion. Thank you, Marion. Sounds like fun. Well, coming up, we have sports, and then the Battle of the Soaps. That's right after this break. What the heck is going on at the Smith's house? They're just discovering TSN, the sports network, Canada's all-sports cable TV channel. Every day, TSN gives you 24 hours of major events from across Canada and around the world. Call your cable company to bring TSN into your home. With the sports network, you're right there. So for great sports action, call today. Pacific Western Holidays would like to say a few words about San Francisco. The city, the streets, the service, the price, the whining, the dining, the smiles, the price, the shopping, the fun, the attention, and the price. Pacific Western Holidays to San Francisco for just $179 return. Call your travel agent or Pacific Western today for reservations. Tonight on Sports Page, the Oilers are at the Pacific Coliseum to take on the Canucks. That's Sports Page, weeknights at 11.
we asked Virginia Reed if she thought her denture cleanser could clean away cherry stain. Probably would. What about a stain of cherry and tea? Probably it would not. Or a triple stain of cherry, tea, and even coffee? I don't think it would. Watch Extra Strength Effortent work on a triple stain of cherry, tea, and even coffee with Effortent's powerful blue action formula. It cleaned beautifully. In between each tooth, I'm going to switch to Effortent. Extra Strength Effortent removes even stubborn stains between teeth. Time for Auto Show 85. Wheel power at the PNE on now through Sunday, January 27th. Catch the flash, the sleek lines, the latest in automotive engineering. It's the greatest auto show ever. New decors, special features, classics, alternate fuels, and everything in automobiles from two-seaters to family wagons. Take in the wheel power at Auto Show 85. Daily at the PNE till Sunday, January 27th. Free auto show program with every admission. Tonight on Vancouver. Vancouver Woman examines the surge of women in business. Why are women succeeding in these troubled times? What's their competitive edge? Will women lead us out of the recession? That's Vancouver. Turn to us tonight at 7 on BU 13. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, the Vancouver Canucks take on one of the few NHL teams they're playing 500 hockey against this season. And strangely enough, that team is the Stanley Cup champion Edmonton Oilers. Oilers and Canucks 730 at the Coliseum. Vancouver is 2-2-1 two, two and one against Edmonton, including two wins and a tie in the last three meetings. Let's take a look now at the NHL scoreboard. The Rangers doing a number on the Devils. 8-4 the score there in the third period. Chicago and Buffalo all tied up at one also in the third period period. Elsewhere, St. Louis is leading Winnipeg 5-0. That game's still in the first period. Edmonton at Vancouver later tonight. Now let's go to Winnipeg for highlights of tonight's game between the Jets and Blues. First period, St. Louis gets on the board as Dave Barr scores from Craig Levy. Barr will deflect Levy's shot from the point. Barr's eighth of the season at 2-11. Blues go up 2-0. A bad play here by goaltender Brian Hayward of the Jets. Doug Gilmore checks him. Pass out to Brian Sutter. He scores his 18th at 5-49. Blues make it 3-0 on Bernie Federico's 17th goal of the campaign at 6.45 from Mullen. Federico and Sutter have added their second goals of the evening. It's now 5-0 for the Blues. We've reached the halfway point of our sports medicine series. Up till now, Chris Hebb has dealt with injuries, how they occur, how, they, how they're detected and repaired, and the rehabilitation process. Tonight, an ounce of prevention. We have attempted in the first three chapters of this series to show you just what happens when an athlete goes down with a knee injury and how medical personnel work to get he or she back to action. Now we must address how those injuries could have been prevented in the first place. Ron Madison is the trainer at UBC. He is the only paid physiotherapist on the entire campus and with 15 varsity teams to care for, he is a problem in preventing injury right off the bat. There are many, many places in sport where you can look at prevention. And I said before, as we don't really practice it, if you take this football team and you just watched us tape, we tape for two hours. And we do that every day before practice, a little bit less on light days. And um, how much of that is, is actual prevention or how much is, of that is after the fact dealing with an injury? Ideally, the most cost-effective ratio is up to 20 players per trainer, and that makes Larry Ashley of the Canucks a very lucky man. One of his allies in preventing injury is this machine, the Cybex. We test everybody at training camp when they come in, just for the quadricep and hamstring of each knee, so then we have a baseline for our rehabilitation, so we, we, we know we can revert back and see what the previous strength levels were of the quadricep, the hamstring, and the range of motion. So then that's, that's our ultimate goal in rehabilitation, is to return that knee to its previous uh, strength and power levels. And we do that with the Cybex, we do that with uh, the Nautilus program that we're on. So that, you know, the stronger the joints, the stronger the quadriceps and hamstring are, the better stabilization you get for the joint as, as a shock absorber. Mm -hmm. You were mentioning earlier one of the problems that you think may be causing the spate of knee injuries that Vancouver has had is the, the plastic skate uh, blade holders. Now, yeah, I really can't substantiate it with any significant fact, but uh, it's, there's been a uh, tremendous amount of increase, a, a tremendous increase in the amount of ankle and knee problems in the last six, seven years since they changed the blade. Uh, the plastic doesn't really absorb the shock like the old conventional uh, aluminum 
uh, blade holder did. Where before in the old days, he used to bend all the time, showing that uh, the shock was being absorbed somewhere. Where now, if the blade doesn't bl uh, break, the shock has to go somewhere. But it's, uh, it's really a shot in the dark, but it's a hell of a coincidence. Right? In recent years, officiating has come under some fire in the area of injury prevention. Madison, for one, feels the sport of rugby in particular could use stricter policing. In fact, if you get down to uh, catastrophic injuries or major traumatic injuries, this rugby isn't far behind football. The number of, of quads and paraplegics that are happening on the rugby fields in the lower mainland um, the epidemic proportions. The problems happen in the scrum when officials bend the rules or don't enforce them at all. So if you look at a rugby scrum when they set, is apparently now they don't get locked and then, okay, start to push. Is there sort of holding off a foot or is it 18 inches and coming together and, and really locking? And the problems happen with, with hyperflexion or the the head gets driven down onto the chest, and if the scrum collapses and somebody in the middle is locked in and can't get out, their head is literally reefed around. Football has taken steps through the rule book to eliminate a lot of knee injuries especially. The crackback block has been outlawed, for instance, so officials, as you see, can help prevent injury, just as the trainer and doctor can. But it's the player who must accept the responsibility of being ready for the works. If you're a football player, you have to have tremendous strength in your quadricep muscle and your hamstrings. And you must have good flexibility. If you're a runner, you have to be very flexible in the calf muscles and the hamstrings. And you must be strong in the thighs and the muscles at the front of your leg. And in terms of prevention, you have to increase slowly. Because overuse is you know, the biggest problem that we see. It, it, apart from traumatic injury, spraining an ankle or having a 250-pound lineman uh, blast you on the outside of the knee. What we have shown you this week is just the tip of the iceberg. Sports medicine is much more than surgery and rehabilitation and braces. It's more than just doctors and trainers, too. Sometimes an athlete's main ally can be the pharmacist, and next week we'll discuss that topic, strength drugs and sport, the enigma of the 80s. A reminder that we'll be running a special Super Bowl preview tomorrow, 3 o'clock here on VU 13. Our station will also be carrying Super Bowl XIX pregame show, 1 o'clock Sunday, kickoff 317. Now, if there is anyone on the lower mainland who can give an expert's view on the Super Bowl, it's Jim Mills. Mills, a Richmond native, is a 23-year-old offensive lineman with the Indianapolis Colts. Jim Mills has now played two seasons, starting a total of 20 games with the Colts. 1983 in Baltimore, the past season at Indianapolis. A six foot nine offensive tackle, Mills has faced the best defensive lineman in the business. Well, I had to play Gastineau twice this year. Uh, Howie Long, Doug Betters, Two Tall Jones. Um, those are about four, probably the best players. Any one of those four that sticks out as the toughest? Uh, I, I'd have to say Howie Long. He threw a beating on me pretty bad at times. But I, you know, I did pretty good against him too. And Gastineau, I think, I like the way he plays because he just tries to run, outrun you. And a lot of the tackles are 300 pounds. That's where he gets a lot of his sacks. And I try to stay you know, pretty light so I can, it's such a speed game now on the outside. Mills says Miami is the best overall team he worked against in 84, and he picks the Dolphins to beat the 49ers in Sunday's Super Bowl. Well, probably because I'm favored to Miami because we play them all the time, yeah. and I kind of like, you know, the players on the team know a few of them. I just think that uh, Marino is, you know, probably the best quarterback around, or probably ever, the way he's playing lately. Right. And I, just, I don't know, I, but San Francisco's been hot this year. It's, I think it's going to be the best Super Bowl in 10 years, maybe. What is it that makes Marino so good? I don't know. He was a late draft pick in the first round, mm -hmm. five quarterbacks ahead of him. He's got that, I guess they say he's got that quick release, and he's got such a good offensive line in front of him. He's got time to just sit back there, and he's got the great receivers. I'm Don Taylor. You're up to date in the world of sports. Peter Clemente has the weather after this.
Ultimate Adventure. United Sports present the Grand National Motor Spectacular. One night, Saturday, January 26th at BC Place. We're going to turn the floor of BC Place into a giant mud pit for the Hot Rod Truck Mud Racing Winter Nationals. Modified and super modified four-wheel drives digging their way out of a four-foot mud box. Same night, the Hot Rod Truck and Tractor Super Pole National Championship. Plus the Hot Rod Tug of War. Best show truck competition. Much more, including the human bomb and a giant truck demolition derby. And the baddest Ford van in the land, Lead Butterfly. The roof of BC Place is coming off. Turn to us for countdown to Super Bowl. What have we seen in the past? What do we look for at game time? The Super Bowl preview on BU 13. Saturday, February 2nd, the day you have a vote in Vancouver's future. Philip Owen is the key to that future. He's a businessman who served in the Parks Board and the City Planning Commission. He's a director of the Downtown Vancouver Association, the Vancouver Art Gallery and the BC Paraplegic Foundation. He's on the advisory board of the Vancouver Peace Center Society and chairman of the BC Transit Parkway Committee. Saturday, February 2nd, the day to vote for Philip Owen. You'll make Vancouver City Council stronger and more effective. And now, BU 13 First News Weather with Douglas Miller, brought to you by Sony. Douglas Miller has the night off tonight. Here with the latest weather is Peter Clementi. Thank you very much. Cold in the middle and warm at both ends. That's a good way to describe what's happening weather-wise across the country. Still some very cold temperatures through the prairies and in the Northwest Territories today. But as you travel eastward, the severe stuff dissipates and starts to break down. And in the east, it's just quite a bit warmer. Actually, a temperature of minus 5 degrees in uh, St. John's. Uh, they had snow today. Isn't really quite a bit warmer, but uh, it's still quite a bit warmer than minus 33. Increasing cloud to the Maritimes due to a system sitting off the coast of the Maritimes. Uh, Halifax, the only place that escaped clouds today, they had a temperature of minus 9. There's a low to the south of the lakes that brought wind and snow to parts of southern Ontario. Toronto had snow today with a temperature of minus 5. Ottawa was cloudy and minus 13. Further west, it was colder. Thunder Bay had a temperature of 14 degrees under cloudy skies. And it's a strong ridge of high pressure in the Northwest Territory it's causing the cold temperatures throughout the uh, Northwest Territories and the prairies. Winnipeg was clear with a temperature of minus 27 through Regina today with uh, partly cloudy skies and a temperature of minus 16. Edmonton had snow with a temperature of minus 10. A warm front along the border brought some snow. The border between uh, British Columbia and Alberta brought some snow to their way in Calgary today with a temperature of minus 1 degree. In our province, we have a bit of a warm front coming on shore tonight. That is going to bring us rain. Prince Rupert was the Canadian hotspot today with a temperature of 10 degrees down in the southeastern part of the province. It's still a little bit cooler. Tofino today, foggy with a temperature of 9 degrees. Port Alberni has fog or had fog today, temperature of 7. Nanaimo is still fog with low cloud, patchy low cloud, a temperature of 6 degrees. Victoria, foggy and 8. Powell River is foggy and 7. Squamish, cloudy and 5 today. Vancouver had low cloud and uh, fog and drizzle all day, a temperature of 8 degrees. Abbotsford, low cloud as well with a temperature of 6 degrees. Tonight we can expect clouds, we can expect drizzle and fog. We have some of that now. The overnight lows somewhere between 1 and 3, 20 percent chance of precipitation. Tomorrow it will be cloudy with drizzle and fog. Highs getting up near 7 degrees, a 20 percent chance of rain. Sunday it will be warmer. We will have occasional rain. If you're going to Super Bowl party, do it indoors. 50 percent chance it will rain on you. And that's it. Have a good weekend. Thanks, Peter. Have Thank a nice you, weekend. Some American soap operas are the biggest crowd pleasers on British television, but the Brits could do their own nighttime soap based on their programming war. The staid old BBC is claiming Dirty Pool now that it has been outbid on the rights for the hit show Dallas. But as Richard Blightstone reports, the BBC is not giving up without a fight. The headlines screamed in shock and outrage. A fast one's been pulled on the dear old BBC, and a checkbook war for ratings is in the offing. London's regional Thames television company claims it did no wrong in outbidding the BBC for one of its biggest audience pullers. 
But the coup could backfire. Other companies in the 15-member commercial network say they may not air the expensive Ewing saga. And during an 11-minute report on the controversy on Channel 4's Evening News, the BBC's controller called it underhanded and shabby and then showed the ace up his sleeve. Uh, I've got 17 hours of Dallas, which is a serial. Uh, sitting on the shelf, and I have until 1989 to put those, under the terms of my current contract, uh, to put those on to television. Are you going to do that? Well, Are you going to try that to we scupper have... them it's... by holding out Dallas for that long? Well, if it stops this kind of uh, financial piracy, yes. And how, Mr. Sutherland, what would be Thames Television's reaction to that? Well, our contract uh, for Dallas uh, starts uh, later in the year, and we've every intention of running Dallas when, when it's available to run. But Thames will be in the rather difficult position of paying... Pay playing the end of a cliffhanger before we've heard the beginning of it, because we will have the beginning of the cliffhanger. There's always a cliffhanger at the end of the season. Thames will have the end of the cliffhanger. We'll have the beginning of it. And they look very stupid playing it before we've played ours. A soap operatic air of suspense now hangs over London's wide open spaces. Will British viewers have to watch the end of Dallas before the beginning? Will the BBC strike back by poaching Hill Street Blues or the A-Team? Will British businessmen keep their reputation for gentility and fair play? Richard Blystone, CNN London. Big questions <laughs> facing our Stiff time. Stiff upper lip. Oh, boy. That's the news. Stay tuned for Vancouver next on VU13. And as we say goodnight, we would like you to see the names of the people who bring you first news. Thanks for being with us, and have a nice weekend. Good night. Good night. Thursday, 2020 examines abortion clinic bombings throughout the U.S. right here at 10. Tonight, the action and adventure of Miami Vice moves to 9 on VU13. Stay tuned now for Vancouver, next in sight on VU13. Canada, price smashers from Bomark. When it comes to saving you money, we succeed by smashing prices. Save on our most popular Easy Clean range. Price smasher price only $5.89. Save on this deluxe Bomark 17 cubic foot no frost refrigerator. Price smasher price only $9.19. Price smashers from Bomark, a smashing success. Fully guaranteed by the Bay. Barbara, you up? Barbara, you up? I'm up now. I can't sleep with this cold. My throat's really sore. All right, I'll get the sucrets. Sucrets? Sucrets is basic medicine for sore throats. Pain-relieving medicine. Basic medicine that works fast. I'm glad one of us can sleep. Sucrets, basic medicine that works fast. Count them. Every week in every Safeway store, there are hundreds of great specials. This week, apples, apples, and more apples. Your choice. Red Delicious Macintosh or Spartans. Fancy grade, handy lunchbox size. The 15-pound case, only $4.99. And pick up this great special on ground beef. Just right for hamburgers, meatballs, or meatloaves. Regular quality in packages over 10 pounds. Just 99 cents a pound. Cash in on Safeway's super specials. Safeway. Working hard to be your favorite food store. This Saturday, the Love Boat sails at a special 8 o'clock time. 
Yeah, nobody's gonna pay to see me fight. Are you kidding? People love to see a massacre. It's just an exhibition. It's not a real fight. But this is a real nose. <laughs> then at nine, two special episodes of Give Me a Break. What about the last Valentine's Day? That was not my fault. Yes, it was. Listen, it was not my fault, but you just stay tuned and judge for yourself. Turn to us Saturday. What you're dealing with, in case you forget, think about the corpse. Catch the action of Miami Vice tonight at 9 on VU13. Tonight, I put on the gloves and climb into the ring with Canada's champion kickboxer. Women seem to have the answer to succeeding in small business and are leading the economic recovery. Children under six must now be restrained in cars. Finally, a law to save children's lives. These stories and more tonight on Vancouver Woman with Maria LaRose, Lois Warren, Michelle Gibson, and Barbara Constantine. Now here's Maria with the January 18th edition of Vancouver Woman. Good evening. It's being called the new capitalism. Women, not men, creating jobs in British Columbia's recession-ravaged economy. And in B.C. and the rest of Canada, women are fast becoming the economic trailblazers of the 80s. Tonight, the Vancouver Woman cover story looks at the rise of female capitalism, woman in business. Statistics Canada figures show that women are now a major force in Canadian small business. They're branching out on their own and opening new enterprises at a rate of three to one over men. And as banks are beginning to recognize, they are proving to be more successful at creating new jobs than men. Women are casting off self-doubt and saying they can be just as or even more successful in business than men. Tonight, we look at why women are succeeding in these economic tough times. Are women going out on their own because there is no room on the corporate ladder? How do financial institutions look on women as business people? And we'll meet some of Vancouver's successful women entrepreneurs. Now, here's Lois with Janet Fraser of Continuing Education at UBC. Welcome back, Janet. Thank you. Why are women starting up in business now more than ever? Well, I think there's two main reasons that um, the women who are in small businesses usually cite. One is challenge. Interestingly, some of the most successful small business owners have been women with plenty of experience and a good education who have reached a middle management level in a corporation and have stopped there. And the reason that they haven't moved into the executive suite is because dot, 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 they have been women. So these very self-same women have gone out with that experience, with that education, and have establish their own small businesses owe justice they have also become competitors of that very same corporation that's one reason the challenge I understand they're doing really well too. they are doing immensely well in 1984 of the 75,000 new businesses established 50,000 of those new businesses were established by women what is it about women that makes them do well. I mean, we weren't taught as, as students, as little girls, to pursue business angles. No, indeed. We were always taught not to worry our pretty little heads about business. <laughs> but isn't it fun that now that we have worried our pretty little heads about business, we do very well indeed. I think women bring a lot of qualities to the establishment of small business that are inherently female and have sometimes been disregarded as not very valuable qualities, but we now find, to the contrary, they really work when you're establishing your own small enterprise. Women bring a lot of energy. They bring a desire the way pioneers did to do very well indeed for themselves and for the women behind them. They have a robust sense of humor which pulls them through and helps with the flexibility that's required. They can do 24 things at the same time and this we all know came from stirring the soup and minding the baby and answering the telephone and all those kinds of things. You mentioned Students. something about pioneers. Does that mean they're all survivors or they have the strong instinct to survive? Is that what you mean by pioneers? I still think that women in business, the new entrepreneur, is a pioneer. Yes, there, 10 years ago we weren't even considering the numbers of women that are now in small business and as such they have to have some remarkable qualities to be as successful as they really are. Now, you mentioned to me earlier that they seem to have um, a low expectation or a low um, 
drive in terms of reward when, once they get into business, and that sort of works in the long run for them. Well, it's one of the characteristics that has helped in terms of success. It's really the expectation for profits in the first year of business. Much, much lower, we found, according to surveys, than have men. So as such, the patience and the ability to stay, the stayability in their, in their businesses, pays off in the long run. You couple that characteristic with the fact that 70% of women who enter small businesses take business management courses and continue with management education, plus 90% use professionals, lawyers, accountants, to help them establish their small businesses, and almost all of them plan six to ten months before they take that first step forward into the new venture. Uh -huh, but what about the expectation when it comes to money? When it comes to money, they do not expect to do as well as soon as do men, and as such, they're, uh, they're seldom disappointed. <laughs> okay, <laughs> how much money? How much money? Compar comparing with men's expectations within the first year. Well, there's one interesting survey that women expected to make $12,000 profit in their small businesses in the first year, and men expected to make a $40,000 profit. That's a shocking margin. Yes, yes. Yeah, no, what is it? Does that pay off if you don't think you're going to make a lot of money within the first year? Well, I'm not really quite sure how it works, but I would think that if your expectations were such and you cut your, your pattern to fit that particular mold, you would probably be, be a better planner. And as such, you would move more slowly, but you would gain. And as we know, women are very successful, and they're the big new employers, which makes them the darling of the Tory government. <laughs> you mentioned to me something about a sense of humor mm -hmm. as being a female quality. Well, no, not necessarily a female quality, but my observation is with the many women I know who operate small businesses, that they use that sense of humor to keep a positiveness, a cheerfulness, sanity in the, the very many demands that are made upon the, the young female, or not the young, the young or the re-entry or the whatever female entrepreneur. A sense of humor. I'll keep that in mind. Yes, do. <laughs> Thanks, Janet. You're welcome. <laughs> Women in Business, tonight's Vancouver Woman cover story continues in a moment. When we return after the break, we'll meet two women who have conquered the challenge of starting a new business in a time when new businesses are failing at a startling rate. You're watching Vancouver Woman. He asked Virginia Reed if she thought her denture cleanser could clean away cherry stain. Probably would. What about a stain of cherry and tea? Probably it would not. Or a triple stain of cherry, tea, and even coffee? I don't think it would. Watch Extra Strength Effordent work on a triple stain of cherry, tea, and even coffee with Effordent's powerful blue action formula. It cleaned beautifully. In between each tooth, I'm going to switch to Effordent. Extra Strength Effordent removes even stubborn stains between teeth. Most people use Pam Pure Vegetable Spray for all their stick-free cooking. It works. But if you've been advised to cut down on fats, oils, or calories, look, this chicken breast cooked in oil absorbed 29 calories. Pam adds one. This serving of mushrooms fried in margarine picked up 65 calories. Pam adds four. These hash browns fried in shortening absorbed 189 calories. Pam adds two. Don't add extra calories to your meals. Use Pam. Tomorrow on First News Week. Stephen Fonio crosses into Manitoba saying he'll be home soon. First News Week, Saturday at 5 on BU 13. You may have heard some juicy rumors about Swiss Chalet. That we charcoal broil our chickens over real hardwood charcoal. That we serve meaty charbroiled ribs. That we've got fresh cut fries and sauce just ready for dipping. And at Swiss Chalet, everything tastes great. Know what? There's no Juicy rumors are all true. So come to Swiss Chalet. Avon food shoppers know that they're cutting down their food bills without sacrificing quality. I find I save 20 to 30 percent, and I get fresh produce, fresh meats. Their meats are great. The meat, we find the, the meat better than we've been able to get anyplace else. I save a lot in their meat, their dairy products. We find our meat prices a lot cheaper. Fresh meat, big turnover. And I personally guarantee you will save money. Save on foods where you save on freshness. 
women now head 30 percent of small businesses, and that figure is causing banks and other financial institutions to rethink their policy regarding loans to women. They now recognize the high success rate women in business enjoy. The bank has always had women clients, many of them. But over the last decade, there's been a tremendous influx of women entrepreneurs. Uh, the, the statistics, the last statistics I saw from uh, Statistics Canada indicated there were two businesses started by women for every one of men. And lately, the statistics have also shown that women are basically more successful than men in operating small business. Now, why would that be? Their expectations aren't as high. They are better prepared, they move more cautiously, and as a result, uh, don't find themselves in the pitfalls that the men seem to do when they jump into things. With that in mind, then, the bank must welcome women clients. What changes has the bank made accordingly to make sure that, that women do feel as though they can deal with you? We haven't got rid of all the bigots yet in the bank, but we're working very hard at it. You find the changing attitude. Women are becoming more accepted in business. The uh, lenders are younger, and they've grown up with this changing uh, phenomena of women being as equal as men. And they're getting, a, they're getting their fair share, fair hearing. Women have earned for themselves a reputation over the past few years in the business world as having a willingness to learn and broaden their horizons, and it's paying off. Many of the women that I know in business uh, are, are extremely shrewd, very, very capable. And maybe because they're not afraid to ask questions, they're not afraid to go for help. And men have a tendency, their pride possibly prevents them from seeking help until it's too late. Whereas the woman will uh, make no bones about going to somebody and seeking some answers. So what does the future hold now that the groundwork has been laid where to now? Well, we're seeing more and more women now uh, in their mid-30s, early 30s, getting into business and being highly successful at it. I suspect that women will have a greater influence on our economic well-being in the years to come, and not too many years to come. Peg Byers is a good example of a success story within the confines of the banking community. She is one of a growing army of women moving into the corporate ranks, filling roles on both sides of the banker-client transaction. I started at the bottom and climbed uh, one step at a time, starting as a teller in Prince Albert, Saskatchewan, 19 years ago this month and then going on to uh, work in branch um, work uh, uh, on the discount desk, which is in the lending department, then uh, going into personnel and uh, setting up a centralized hiring office where we, I hired all the clerks and tellers and stenos, on to hire all of the management training people for the bank in Saskatchewan, and then uh, a real keen desire to get into public relations and marketing so that uh, I did some things in the community which gave me an opportunity to then go back to my company and say I have some experience and they gave me the opportunity to become the manager of public relations in Regina. Peg has a strong sense of the scope available to all businesswomen. Well I'm a great believer in um, being street smart and in uh, taking advantage of free opportunities. And by that I mean I have a sensitivity to what's happening in the world, but I also have a, uh, a great desire of going out into the business community or the, or the social community and saying, here I am, what do you want me to do? And I did that with the YWCA in, in uh, Regina, Saskatchewan, uh, because I wanted to get into public relations and I didn't have any background. So I went to them and I said, I'd like to be on your, you know, with your, your PR committee. So I did, and the next year I was chairman of it, and we had a very successful year. So I could then uh, find out that, yes, I do have some skills in this area. It didn't cost me anything except time, but it gave me uh, the necessary experience to then go to my company and say, I have some expertise in this area. Please consider me for this job. For all budding woman entrepreneurs, Peg has this advice. Uh, being vocal about what you want is a very key uh, thing in getting ahead. Because if you never open your mouth, uh, your, your personnel uh, department or whoever will never know what you want. So we have to stand up on our own two feet and say, this is who I am, this is what I think I can do, give me a chance.
The statistics you've just seen are just some of the many reasons three times more women than men are starting new businesses in Canada. With Maria to talk about women succeeding in business are two Vancouver entrepreneurs who are providing jobs for 49 people between them. Pam Williams is the owner of Au Chocolat and Marlene Baldwin, owner of the advertising specialties firm Creative Incentives. Welcome. How long have you each mm -hmm. been in business, Pam? Uh, this is our fourth year. Mm -hmm. And right. we've just completed our fifth. Would you consider yourselves successful business women? I think still being in business in four years makes it successful, yes. I would agree. So you're successful. You've been in it for upwards of four years. Why small business? Um, to grow something of your own. That's something that's yours and develop your own style and your own uh, business, really. Mm -hmm. Marlene? I would say a similar thing. We, um, When I decided to, to start my own business, I wanted to do something on my own and, and um, be able to gain my own goals. Yeah. What had you done goals. before? What types of jobs? Uh, I've been in sales, had worked in media, um, had been on the buying end of my types of products, and um, so basically in the sales cap capacity. Pam, did your other jobs help you come to the conclusion that you wanted to have your own business? Um, I've been in the retail business since I was an adult, and I'd been a buyer and I'd been a general manager. And I really had come to a point where there was, really wasn't much further for me to go here in Vancouver. And so I thought, well, I'll do something that I know real well and uh, create my own thing instead of trying to keep going up in the ladder when there was nowhere to go. But it takes guts. Just that decision must have taken a while, let alone mm. setting up the business. Is that is that right? Yes. Yes, it did. Mm -hmm. It took us or it took me six months to first off make that big decision to leave the mm -hmm. corporate um, structure and then um, six months to actually decide that it, yes, we'll take a gamble. Let's mm -hmm. talk about finances for a minute because Michelle just told us about how things are changing right. a little in the mm -hmm. finance world. How was it four years ago? for you to find financing for this venture? Um, we didn't really have too much of a problem only because we put up everything we owned. You know, in other <laughs> words, all your collateral, everything, and we had collateral. Now, would a man have to do that? Uh, yes, I think he would, mm -hmm. the same, yes. Okay, Marlene, what about you? Did you run across any problems trying to get financing for what you wanted to do? I uh, didn't have trouble getting the financing, but had a, a funny anecdote, anecdote in that um, because the company was in my name and it was my company. Um, when I went to get financing, the banks are so used to men coming in that um, when a man comes in with his wife to get financing, they always at tell the woman that um, she must go and get independent legal advice. Well, in this case, they had to tell my husband that he had to go and get independent legal advice, and they just really had trouble handling this whole situation. There are a number of factors involved, it seems, in the fact that women are so successful in small business. The literature proves this over and over again. Mm -hmm. And what I want you two to do is tell us which of these things you took into consideration or you were involved in and, and how it helped you. The first seems to be researching your product or your market before you open your doors. Now, Pam, how much of that did you do? Um, I knew the business, basically. I'd been in the retail business forever. It was my field. But what about chocolate in particular um, when you opened? There weren't a lot of specialty no, chocolates around. There were. I had to learn as quick as I could from whoever I could. And uh, that was a real exciting adventure, just the fact of learning, mm -hmm. you know, something new and different. How did you do that? Uh, through a lot of books, um, through the people supplying me with the, the products. They told me how to do it and how to use it and, and that kind of thing. So it, it was a long process, and it was an on-site process. We've learned a lot in the last four years than we knew when we began. And I know. bet you had to eat a lot of chocolate. In <laughs> <your> <laughs> <right>. <laughs> yes. What about you, Marlene? Did you do much research? Um, again, about six months. Uh, six months of research of calling on um, client, potential clients and saying, what do you buy in this mm -hmm. type of product? And, um, and then finding suppliers and then starting from there. So what's the conclusion that the two of you come, have come to? Is six months enough? Um, the more, the merrier. But a good six months of really hard can probably get you there. Okay, and you agree now? I would say the thing that saved us, if you were into a highly capitalized um, business, then I think the more capitalization you require in the beginning, the more time you need in the way of research. What about getting professional advisors like lawyers mm -hmm. and accountants? Would you advise that? Yes, very much so. Right. I think it's very important. Both so I've areas. said lawyers, accountants, yeah. have I missed anybody? Uh, no, I think those are the two most important. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And what about taking courses? 
Uh, I think the more you know, the better you're going to be. If you can find them, if they're available uh, to tell you how to handle your finances as well as have the professional help, I think that's a big plus for you. It just makes your job easier to do. Janet Fraser just talked about women's expectations not being quite as high as men's in terms of how much money they would make and that mm -hmm. that acts in women's favor often. Do you agree with that, Marlene, and did you feel that way when you began? I think in the beginning. I think you have to um, realize that, that you, I think you have to have strong goals. I don't think you can say you want to work for small wages the rest of your life or why be in business, but I think you have to um, realize that it's a growth pattern. You are not going to mm -hmm. be making a lot of money the first few years. So in that case, yes, I agree with Janet. Pam, why are women so successful in small business? What is it about them that makes it work? Um, I think their determination mm -hmm. to make it work. You're willing to settle for a little bit less and work a little harder to make it happen. Because it is, a, and it's a very personal, very, um, oh, what's a good word for it? It's just a very personal business. Whatever business you're in, it reflects mm -hmm. you. And I think women are used to taking their business to heart. Mm -hmm. So I think it makes it easier. Marlene, what do you think? What is it about women? Um, I think that, that we're, I don't ask anything of my employees that I wouldn't do myself. And I think that's very important, that you mm -hmm. have, um, that you also enjoy what you're doing as well. I think you have to, um, it can't be just a job. Um, I mean, I just live and breathe my company 24 hours a day, seven days a week, even when I'm on holidays. It just tends to become, as, as Pam said, a part of you. And I think unless you're willing to give it that, you might as well just keep working for somebody else. Well, mm -hmm. congratulations thus far for the two oh, of you and, you, and good luck in future ventures. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Here's Lois. Pam Williams will be holding a one-day workshop on beginning a business and beyond on Saturday, February 23rd. Call the UBC Center for Continuing Education for more information. Now, let's have a look at what else we have coming up on tonight's Vancouver Woman. At 7.30 tonight, on March 1st, child safety seats become mandatory. It's a law that will save countless lives. Joining us is director of the BCMA, Dr. Norman Hamilton. She's 23 and champion kickboxer of Canada. We'll meet Cloverdale's Dale Bakey. After eight, the phrase put on a happy face takes on a new meaning as we meet Alan Pierce. Alan uses masks to help actors slip into character. We'll see a demonstration. And we have live music from singer-songwriter Alison Hogan. In our last half hour, one out of three marriages in BC end up in divorce court. We'll talk about an alternative route to heading straight for the courts, family mediation. Illusion Art, we'll find out what a Vancouver artist is up to now. Stay tuned, Vancouver Woman returns with Panache's look at fashion video. At Sears, you can save 25 to 30 percent on custom window fashions and bedroom coordinates, no matter what your style, be it country casual, heavily high-tech, clearly contemporary, very traditional, or even totally natural. You'll save 25 to 30 percent on custom window fashions and bedroom coordinates. Today for our shop at home service or visit any Sears retail store in Canada where you get your money's worth and more. Now it all comes down to this. Saturday, January 26th at BC Place. United Sports present the Grand National Motor Spectacular. Awesome flame-throwing, gear-shattering axle swapping power. The Hot Rod Truck and Tractor Super Bowl National Championship. Two and four-wheel drive trucks and the multi-engine dragster tractors. Same night, the Hot Rod Truck Mud Racing Winter National. Plus the Tug of War. The Best Show Truck Competition. The Dash for Cash and the Triple Hitter Dive Bomb. Much more. Plus the Monster Car Crusher Lead Butterfly. Only at BC Place. They're prison guards who must deal with 3,000 male inmates. The women of San Quentin. Sunday's film at 9 on VU13. When you buy any McCain product, you know you're getting terrific quality. What you can also get is a chance to fly Air Canada to a deluxe holiday for two at one of the fabulous Princess Hotels in beautiful Bermuda. Just cut the name from any McCain package and send it to this address. Enter as often as you like. The contest ends March 1st. Any McCain package can turn into a fabulous Princess Hotels holiday in beautiful Bermuda. McCain's family of fine products are available at IGA. 
blown out prices on all remaining 84 furniture during our gigantic half yearly clearance. Save up to 25% on all open stock bedroom furniture like this nightstand, mirror, or headboard for $38 each. Chests from $58. Dressers from $88. This glass and chrome dinette is also on sale. Just $288 or $16.20 a month. Prices don't get any lower than this. So what are you waiting for? Shop Grand Tree's half yearly clearance sale today. Smart buyers agree. It's Grand Tree. weekly feature focusing on style and fashion. Tonight we'll sample a bit of a groundbreaker. Video is now a dominant factor in many facets of life and it was only a matter of time before the fashion industry picked up video as a viable exposure vehicle. New York designer Norma Kamali broke the ice with the first all fashion video. She presented a music video highlighting her products, everything from makeup to underwear to evening gowns, all available from Norma Kamali. Here now is a brief look at fashion's first video, one idea that has spawned many within the fashion industry.
fun of Vancouver is working with a live studio audience, right? <laughs> <laughs> and it's easy for you to be part of our audience. Just call 876-1344 and make your reservations for free studio tickets. We'd be glad to have your club or organization with us or come down on your own. The number to phone again is 872-1344. And now to find out what's hot in the streets of Vancouver, here's Barbara asking the question, what kind of jewelry do you find sexy? A gold signet ring. Why is that? Um, I think it looks very distinguished. Prince Charles wears one. Just on the left, the little finger of the left hand. What kind of jewelry do you like to see on a man? I like gold jewelry. Why is that? Um, it, well, it's classical. It, you know, it's not cheap looking and it's not... The gold chain isn't too feminine, it's just, you know, it's more masculine, I guess. Emeralds and rubies, because they're expensive, and green and red, and usually wear a low-cut gown when you wear them, and that adds a little bit of attraction. Big chunky jewelry. Yes, chunky yeah. jewelry. Okay, why is that? I don't know, fashionable, I guess. Yeah. Okay, now what about you? What kind of jewelry do you think looks best on men? I like big chunky jewelry myself, you can tell. <laughs> uh, big thick gold chains. Uh, Things like that, I think they look great. Fine signet ring, or a uh, club, club insignia. What's that? Oh, it could be Masons, or could be. Why? Well. Why is that? That's what I like. The woman herself shouldn't have to outdo herself in jewelry to look uh, particularly attractive. If she uh, knows that she feels good about herself, then has basically got it. Gold, diamonds. <laughs> Something sparkly? Something nice, yeah. Okay. Expensive. <laughs> How about if you're the one that's buying it? <laughs> <laughs> Plastic. If you've got a sort of a sporty looking person, then I like those black watches. I like pearls. Um, why? Why? It looks pretty. I don't like this big, odd, gaudy stuff. I, you know, I like nice, fine jewelry. I don't like jewelry on men. What? Well, Barbara, what conclusion did you come to? Well, it's really funny. The man that said he didn't like the big gaudy stuff, I was wearing a massive pair of red <laughs> rings the day I talked to those people. But the last lady that said she didn't like jewelry on men, it was really funny. So we got her and then turned the camera off, and all of a sudden she said, oh, my God. And she was standing with her boyfriend who had a diamond earring in his ear. And she was saying, I really like diamond earrings on men. I really like Bring the men. camera back to me. So overall, what did you find? What did men like on women? What did women like on men? Men like the conservative look on women. They like gold. They like diamonds. They like <laughs> something small that doesn't really uh, perhaps attract too much attention, maybe from other men. I don't know what the reason is, but they, overall the look was very conservative. A and who's going to pay for these diamonds and gold? If I were them, I think I'd go plastic. Then <laughs> at least it wouldn't cost as much. And this was something I really wondered about, like for all this jewelry that they want the women to wear, well, yes. <clears throat> who is going to buy it? Just so, um, so overall very conservative, small. Gold and diamonds. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. What about women? From the women, I thought, were a little more imaginative about... Well, actually, they weren't. You know, overall, Maria, I have to say this. It's a terrible thing to say. I was quite uninspired yeah. with people's comments. There was one lady, you probably noticed her, an older lady named Clover. She had all kinds yeah. of really interesting jewelry on. It looked like she had probably spent her life, you know, traveling and picking up this here and yes. this there and to me that kind of jewelry really has a meaning to it because it means something personal to you more so than say you know the uh, the everybody has gold buy, chains right? everybody's got a gold bracelet or a gold but obviously men and women are not getting it together women are going into bigger chunky jewelry and these men are all telling us they don't want that it's funny isn't it because the fashion right now is color and is, uh, you know, is feeling good about yourself and not, you know, not having to restrict yourself mm -hmm. to something small and, and minute, so I don't know what the answer is. Another <laughs> fun piece, Barbara. Next Friday we'll do the same thing. <laughs> We're going to take a short break. We'll be back right after these messages. returns in two minutes with news of new government legislation that should save many lives in years to come. And we'll have songs from one of Vancouver's most talented ladies.
for terrific floor covering buys and the finest in name brand home furnishings, don't miss the bottom line sale at The Warehouse. Everything and more for your home at once a year price reductions. Warehouse wide bottom line prices on living room, dining room, bedroom, carpeting and much more. The bottom line sale gives you more value for your home furnishing buck. Look for the bottom line price tag throughout your one-stop home furnishing and carpet center, 100 Southwest Marine Drive in South Vancouver. The Warehouse. Are my new bra and girdle ready? Any minute. She'll think I made them for her. Because the new Fits Perfect Firm Support Bra and Girdle from Playtex fits so perfectly, you'd swear they were made for you. The secret? This unique bra frame and special girdle fabric that adjusts to your size and shape perfectly. Fits perfectly. New Fits Perfect bras, girdles, and all-in-ones from Playtex. You'd swear they were made for you. We could dance together. Nothing more, nothing personal. John Travolta and Karen Gordy in Saturday Night Fever. Mondays, film at 9 on VU13. Hello, Hal Smith for Mini Gym. Want to make some changes in that body of yours? We've designed a new Mini Gym guide to show you how. Once you've started on the basic exercises, you can turn up the resistance on your tension multiplier, and Mini Gym will give you an aerobic workout that can strengthen your heart while it trims your tummy. Then add 15 to 25 repetitions of this chest and bust exercise to your routine for firming and strengthening the upper torso. Here's how to tighten flabby upper arm and shoulder muscles for a trim V shape. Your mini gym guide shows effective routines for legs, hips, thighs, even special sport conditioning programs. The sooner you start, the sooner you'll be a lot happier with the way you look and feel. So here's how to get your mini gym fast. Your complete fitness system is just $29.95. For COD, Visa, or MasterCard orders, phone 684-5311. That's 684-5311. Or send $29.95 to Mini Gym, 444 Robson Street, Vancouver. a long, hard battle for the BC Medical Association, but today victory was theirs. Highway Minister Alex Fraser has announced the child safety belts will become mandatory beginning March 1st. The new legislation will fill in a gap in restraint laws that allow children under six and over one to roam free in cars. The BCMA feels the new rule could reduce child fatalities by 90 percent. With Lois is Dr. Norman Hamilton of the Medical Association, a man who has been instrumental in lobbying for this new legislation. Dr. Hamilton, 90 percent, that's a shocking statistic. Well, it's the truth, though, Lois. This is what uh, the experience has been in areas where they have introduced uh, seat restraints for young children. Why do you suppose this piece of legislation really has to be here? Because uh, the voluntary system, which the provincial government had hoped would work, hasn't. There's still a lot of children riding in cars in British Columbia unrestrained, and it seems that the law has to be in place before people accept the responsibility and get their children buckled in. So parents aren't doing their jobs in terms of being safety-minded? Uh, that's what it boils down to, but maybe it's a lack of awareness on the part of the parents. Before we went to break, we saw that visual of that baby being crushed in the front seat, sitting on the lap of his or her mother. That's pretty shocking to see visually. What is it that takes place in terms of the car seat when an accident does take place? Well, the, uh, if the child is restrained, the child becomes a part of the car interior, the same as an adult if they're wearing the seat. Uh, and uh, therefore, the energy is absorbed uh, rather than dissipated when the child is loose in the car, it becomes a missile and smashes into the dashboard if the child is loose or if the mother's trying to hold the child and she's not belted in, then the weight of her body will crush the child into the dashboard. And if she is belted in, does that help? Not really, because the, uh, the forces are so great, even in, in low-speed collisions, that the mother's strength isn't sufficient to hold a baby. So that the unsafest place for a baby is in its mother's arms. How does the car seat really help? Well, it, it holds the baby in as part of the car. If you ever have occasion to go down to a wrecking place and see the, uh, the cars uh, in, the, in the wrecking shops, you'll see that the seats are in place and that most of the car interior is in place. 
but you may f find that the windshield has been smashed because the person wasn't wearing a belt and their head went through the windshield. But if you can uh, attach the child or the person uh, to the seat, then they stay in place just the same. Why do you suppose it's taken so long to get this piece of legislation through? I don't really know because we've had uh, seat belt laws for adults and children six years and over uh, since 1978. Uh, but the government, in their wisdom, felt that uh, it wasn't appropriate to impose a new law on the people of British Columbia. But 94,000 signatures collected uh, through the doctor's offices here in British Columbia, I think, helped to change their mind last fall. Do you think the $100 fine will actually get parents to put those seats in the cars? A lot of factors will, will enter into it. Yes, I think uh, the fine has certainly had an effect in adult seat belt uh, uh, compliance. We're seeing more and more people wearing their seat belts all the time. But I think the stories we hear of children whose lives have been saved because they were in a, in a properly uh, fitted car seat uh, will go even further to get people to, to buckle their children in. Will this be a cost-saving measure in any way in terms of insurance and so forth? I haven't uh, heard anything from the insurance company, but certainly it will save uh, immeasurably uh, in terms of costs for brain-damaged children in this province for hospital costs and, of course, the, the tragedy in, in human lives that we see in, in the hospitals from day to day. What about the families who may argue that they can't afford to purchase these seats? Because some of them might be too pricey. Well, uh, they, uh, some of them can carry quite a healthy price tag. However, there are rental agencies available. Uh, it's an ideal uh, gift to give somebody with a young child. They can be handed down from child to child. Uh, I would think that more and more garage sales will have infant seats uh, available. There are lots of ways of, of getting a car seat uh, that doesn't cost too much. Good work. Thank you very much, Dr. Thank Hamilton. you for having me. Joining us tonight is a very talented Vancouver woman. Singer-songwriter Alison Hogan has entered her work in songwriting festivals all over the world and has ever even had one of her songs used in a Japanese television commercial. Now let's hear Alison Hogan sing This Hungry Heart.
coming back to you. This hungry heart keeps coming back to you, back to you, back to this hungry heart keeps coming back to you. We run from love just like wild horses in the night. Allison Hogan returns later in tonight's show. Coming up next, we meet a woman whose hands and feet are quicker than the eye. The Canadian National Women's Kickboxing Champion is here. McCain presents Hawaii Tenno, one of two double delicious 10 inch tender crisp pizzas, now making waves with pizza lovers everywhere. And no wonder. The McCain Tender Crisp Crust is yeast raised like the best pizzeria pizza. And McCain's Hawaiian topping is a rich, nutritious mix of ham and juicy sweet pineapple. New 10 inch Tender Crisp Pizza from McCain, deluxe or Hawaiian style, making waves. Where are you going, Sprout? Up. Up? Up to see why the Giants in the Blitz Corner are so popular. Well, Sprout, everybody knows it's grown from the Giants' own special seeds. So you get tender, thin-skinned niblets corn. Extra sweet corn, picked when it's fresh and crisp, so it tastes like corn on the cob without the cob. That's easy to see from up here. Ho, 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 Green Giant. Saturday at 3, turn to us for Countdown to Super Bowl. What have we seen in the past? What do we look for at game time? The Super Bowl preview on BU 13. It's time for Auto Show 85. Wheel power at the PNE on now through Sunday, January 27th. Catch the flash, the sleek lines, the latest in automotive engineering. It's the greatest auto show ever. New decor, special features, classics, alternate fuels, and everything in automobiles from two-seaters to family wagons. Take in the wheel power at Auto Show 85. Daily at the PNE till Sunday, January 27th. Free auto show program with every admission. Now, from Carpeteria, get tremendous January clearance savings. Get brand new carpeting and incredible January clearance savings. Carpeteria's huge volume dealing means massive accumulations of closeout lines, broken color ranges, part rolls, and remnants. They must make room for new inventory, and you get the savings. Incredible savings of up to 40%, 50%, even 60%. If you think Carpeteria's everyday prices are low, try their January clearance prices. Unbelievable. Carpeteria, Burnaby, Richmond, Surrey, and Nanaimo. While the anatomy of the human body means that men are stronger than women from the waist up, from the waist down, it's a different story, especially now that women have discovered kickboxing, a full contact sport that combines karate with boxing skills. And while the sport was banned in Ontario at first, it's now enjoying growing popularity. With Maria is Dale Bakey of Cloverdale, the Canadian women's kickboxing champion. Welcome. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. In just a few moments, I'm going to be learning some basics in kickboxing, but while I can still talk, I want to ask you a few questions. <laughs> there aren't a lot of women in kickboxing, are there? No, there are not. Why and when did you decide to do this? I started kickboxing about a year and a half ago, and I was taking kung fu before that. I attended a kickboxing seminar put on by the world heavyweight champion, and he told me that I looked like I had some talent so I just did you feel as soon as you started that there was something about the movements that felt natural to you or what does it mean you're a natural kickboxer <laughs> did you kick a lot of kids when you were little no I just started it's just something I found I was good at really just stumbled onto it stumbled onto it I think some people might think that perhaps you were a bit of a tomboy when you were a kid and you did a lot of fighting that that is that true no no, I've never been a, an aggressive person. This has helped me a lot on my self-confidence and just being able to stand up for myself. So what kind of training has been involved to get you to the point where you are now? I train for about two hours every day, and I train at home with my husband. He's my trainer. And that's just sparring, working the bag, running, and working my techniques. 
And you actually spar with men mostly. Why is that? Yes, because there's not many women kickboxing. The only one other woman who is kickboxing in the area is who I'm fighting. So I can't really spar with her right. before we fight. What's it like sparring with men? How do you fare? I do quite well. They don't try and knock me out, so. They don't try? No. You've been knocked out, obviously. No. No? No. Really? I haven't been knocked out, no. Is that unusual? Not to have been knocked out when you've had as many competitions as you have? Women don't hit as hard as men, so it's hard for a woman no. to knock somebody out. Have you had any injuries? I've had a broken nose in training, but no injuries in fighting. You have a daughter? Yes. What's her name? Jessica. And how old is Jessica? She's six years old. What does Jessica think when mom goes off to the gym to kickbox every day? Well, she comes and watches me a lot, and she likes to talk to her friends about it, but she's not interested in doing it herself. She's not? Have you no. tried her doing that? She's not interested in fighting at all. Is that right? No. One more question before we get started. You see, I'm trying to delay this process. <laughs> <laughs> have you run into much uh, trouble with men resisting a woman entering a kickboxing ring? No, most, a lot of times a man will look and just kind of smirk and, you know, I guess think, oh, that's just a joke. But after they watch me, they're impressed. That's right. Let's put on our gloves. Okay. Now, first of all, while we're doing this, tell me what the normal garb is for this. Obviously, I'm not dressed, but I did borrow a pair of runners, and then I saw that you didn't have any runners on. No. Nope. I'm were, sorry. That's fine. <laughs> I've, got an, I've got a distinct advantage here. Okay, bear... <laughs> Bare feet so you can grip the floor. Oh, okay. These are safety kicks. That's to protect your foot and also boxing gloves. And my face. Yes. <laughs> yes, right. Okay, boxing gloves, so it's like boxing, but yes. it's not because you kick. It's boxing plus karate kicks. Okay. Now, be gentle. If I were just walking in and asking you to teach me the basics, where would we, I think, okay. where would we begin? <laughs> First, stand with your left foot forward. I forget which one's my left. I'm so nervous. Okay. Left foot forward, oh, okay. This <laughs> is so far so good. Bring your right hand up by your cheek. Why? That's to protect your head. You okay, can protect yourself Okay, will here. do. You can protect yourself Okay, here. will do. Mm -hmm. Your left hand goes right out, just so you're peeking over your glove. My glove seems so much bigger than yours. Yeah, it is. Oh, good. And <laughs> lots your chin, of padding. Your chin goes down to your chest. Protect your chin, you don't want to get hit in the chin. Hit in the forehead, you can't get knocked out if you get hit in the chin. <laughs> I have a choice. I'd rather have my forehead. Okay, okay the basic punches are the same as boxing, mm -hmm. and that is the left jab. And that's just straight oh, out. Geez. It's just a... Don't move. Okay, do so you want so, me to do that? Yep, straight out towards my face. That's it. Straight out. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> okay. <laughs> my body's moving. What am I, my body's not supposed to be moving, bend is it? Bend your knees a bit. Okay, bend my knees a bit. So a left jab oh, and geez. then a right cross. Bring okay. your shoulder right up. So you're protecting your head okay. with your shoulder. Okay, a right jab. Oh. Left cross. <laughs> <laughs> Why is everybody laughing? It doesn't look the same as you, does it? Okay. Okay, so that's basic straight punches. That's okay. It. <laughs> and there's a hook, left hook. You come up and around oh, this way. A left hook. Are you left-handed? No. Huh. Neither am I. <laughs> okay, a left hook. Okay. Yeah. That's <laughs> right. 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 And okay. right hook, same thing. Okay. She's getting harder. Right. Gee, this is easy. Can and I take these off? Okay. An uppercut. You come in underneath and up to the chin. With the left? With the left, yep. That's it. Okay. And with the right, same thing. Oh. You put your body behind it. Oh, you, so you, are you allowed to punch in the yep. stomach? to the stomach. Do you, is to it, the head do you want the, to, the stomach. head or the stomach? What's better? You want to knock you them out, right? You start on the stomach. That'll wear them down. You knock the wind out of them, <laughs> and then you get their head. <laughs> so I get you in the stomach. That's it. And then and that's and it. knock you out. <laughs> okay, how about the kicking okay, part? Okay, the kicks. The same as the left jab is a front kick with oh, your left, <laughs> your left okay. foot. You hit with the ball of your foot. Okay. Oh, right I've got runners on. That's all right. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. That's it. Okay. A front kick with a back leg is more of a power kick, and you go through. Oh. Go I was right closing through. my eyes. You'll have to do that okay. one again. One more time. Lift you it go right, right up. Through okay. And kick with your heel. How did you get such good balance? Had you trained before with jazz or anything like that? I've taken some ballet. That must have helped. But okay. you get the, the sex, balance practicing. Okay, so I bring the left foot 
up, up, hit with your heel, oh. right through that, <laughs> and lean into it while you're... I'm starting to like this, okay. Come for it, that. <laughs> I could have really hurt you there. <laughs> Maybe I missed my calling. Okay. okay, there's a roundhouse kick. Yes. One with the front leg, you yes. bring it up and you come across. Okay, the front leg. The front leg. Okay, I'm going to put the other leg in. No. Bring it up and okay. just kick across. <laughs> and this, you either kick with the top of your foot or your shin. If you're oh. close enough, you try and kick with your shin because you don't wear pads on your shin and the bone is hard and it hurts more to the other okay. person. To the other person. Okay, I'm going to tell you what. I'm just a beginner, but before we go, will you give us one really tricky, neat, spinny one? One that you, as a very advanced one person, would do. I, I'll stand here. I'm your victim. Go ahead. <laughs> Spinning back kick? Sure, spinning back kick okay. sounds good to me. Oh, gee. Good thing this wasn't this time last year when I was eight months pregnant. <laughs> yeah, thanks so much for coming by. Why don't you tell everyone where they can see you do more in New Westminster February 2nd? Okay, I'll be kickboxing at the Royal Towers Hotel on February 2nd in New Westminster. And if you win that, you are going to be going on to compete for the world the world title yes that's incredible thank you so much to think thank i was you. kicked in the stomach by a potential world champion in kickboxing <laughs> i'm i'm proud and delighted to have met you we're going to take a short break i'm going to take a deep breath and we'll be back in just two minutes stay with us Start 1985 right with great PharmaSafe sale prices. Huggies disposable diapers just $9.87 at PharmaSafe. And stock up on Germac shampoo and conditioner in the bonus pack just $3.37 at PharmaSafe. Oh, and don't forget Vaseline petroleum jelly. Regular or nursery jar just $2.37. Now stop in at PharmaSafe today. Oh, and pick up your PharmaSafe coupon value book. Now remember. Get it at the PharmaSafe price. Escape from those winter blahs. Budget Rent-A-Cars suggests you escape for a mini vacation in a budget rent-a-car. Drive away in a brand new budget rent-a-car any size for just $9.95 a day plus kilometers. Only $9.95 a day plus kilometers get you a brand new car any size to help make your escape comfortable and easy on the wallet. Budget Rent-A-Car has 18 lower mainline locations to serve you. Visit Budget before you get away and ask for your budget coupon book. Use your Sears Charge Card. We feature GM vehicles. Remember who you're dealing with. In case you forget, think about the corpse. Catch the action of Miami Vice tonight at 9 on VU13. If these were all the coffee beans in the world, how many would be good enough for Nabob? Well, if they're not quite ripe, they're not for Nabob. If they're grown too low on the mountain, they're definitely not for Nabob. Nabob only buys the beans that meet Nabob's strict standards for flavor and aroma. Many are picked. Only a precious few are chosen. Mm. The rest just don't measure up. I could dance with you, but you know, you're not my dream girl, nothing like that. Monday on Film at 9, John Travolta and Karen Gorney in the electrifying dance spectacular that rocked the movie industry. Saturday Night Fever. Hey, man, he's great. He's the king out there. She's got the wrong partner, of course, but she, she can dance. We could dance together. Nothing more, nothing personal. Then Sports Medicine in BC continues, and Chris Hamm recaps Super Bowl on the Monday edition of Sports Page. Thousands of people in drought-ravaged Ethiopia are starving, and Vancouver is joining the rest of the world in trying to feed the hungry. Starting Monday, January 28th, the Telethon for Ethiopia comes to Vancouver. It's our way of supporting Mayor Mike Harcourt in the Vancouver City Drive to raise a million dollars for Ethiopia. We'll kick off the week-long Telethon with a special two-hour show featuring local entertainers and celebrities. Telethon for Ethiopia starting Monday, January 28th at 7 on Vancouver. 
Last weekend, the local portion of a national cerebral palsy telethon raised $60,000 for research. Cerebral palsy is a disabling condition caused by a lack of, oxygen, lack of oxygen to the brain before, during, or after birth. Its symptoms can range from mild speech impediment to severe crippling. Tonight, we meet a woman who, despite her daughter's handicap, is working hard to make the child active and independent. Okay, pull them up now. Pull them up. There. Now Meet the Krista. She's three years old. Like most three-year-olds, she's determined to do things by herself, despite the odds. But Krista suffers from cerebral palsy, so her sight is limited and she can't walk yet. But she's still determined to be independent. Her mother, Iona Esslinger, works with her on a daily basis to improve her skills, and soon she hopes to have her strong enough so she can walk. But she remembers when Krista was barely capable of rolling over. She was always very stiff. She never kicked her legs or moved her legs around, and she never really clung to me or, or even attempted to hang on or anything like that. She never attempted to even roll or... She could move her head, but she couldn't roll at all. She would sort of just lay there. Whatever position you would put her in, she would basically stay. OK, come on, let's have breakfast. You come and get the cereal out. Come on. Open the hands, though, please. Thank you. It's really hard to explain because there's nothing definite. It was just sort of a feeling. As I say, she never really kicked her legs or moved her legs at all. And um, she, she would move her arms and her hands, but not she didn't seem to move very much at all. And she was a very, she was not a happy baby. She was very unhappy, cried, she cried a lot. Take her to the table. Something didn't feel right. I couldn't, I couldn't put my finger on it. I didn't know what it was, but somehow something didn't feel right to me. And all the professionals, the doctors, and, and um, people said, well, it's just because she was preemie and you're worried about her, you know, she's a perfectly healthy baby, nothing to worry about, you know, just quit worrying, you're first time mother, that's all it is. And they'd pat me on the head and send me home again. <laughs> I'll wear this one. You want to wear that one there? Yeah. Okay. So the next day I went to see the specialist and he said, you know, your daughter has cerebral palsy. And that, that floored me because I, all I could think about was cerebral palsy was the children that I had seen that were very severely handicapped. And it frightened me because I didn't know what to expect and nobody could tell me. They said they, she was far too young. She was five months old when she was diagnosed. And she was just far too young to be able to tell how severe it was going to affect her. Use your spoon, Krista. You must use your spoon, all right? Yeah, all right. Let's put your eye patch on, okay? okay? They figured she'd never crawl on her hands and knees. And one of the other infant workers and myself felt that she could if we could just get her going. But I used to put her up okay. on her knees okay. and her hands, and then I would just move one hand and then one knee, and we used to do this for hours at a time, just doing that. And then when she would get the idea, I would get a little toy and put her hands on the toy, and then I would move her, move her knees as we would crawl around the house, okay. that type of a thing. And feeding skills, she, it took her a little longer. She was very poor in the coordination of getting her hand to her mouth for a long time, so that was, that was delayed. And we just worked on that day by day, and it, I think it's come along really well, too. That's good. Much better. Much better. Mm -hmm. For me right now, the biggest problem is uh, the time it takes to do everything with her. I get very tired, and I still get discouraged. It takes forever to help her to get dressed, and she wants to do it herself. And I want her to be able to do it herself, and she has to learn. But it maybe take me, you know, two or three or four times as long to allow her to help to do it herself, and I find that tiring. Some days I just get exhausted, and I just find that I'm picking her up and shoving her clothes on her and carrying her to wherever I have to go rather than allowing her to do it herself because it just gets to be too much. I get tired and depressed, but I know that I'll get over it. I know it's just a stage, and I know that, okay, so I'm depressed today, and I don't worry about it so much anymore. I figure I'm now entitled to get depressed once in a while, and um, the next day usually we start to pick up and things go great. Well, she'll come to me and she'll say, I love you, Mommy. That makes everything a lot better. <laughs> yes, she is lovely. Yes, she is wonderful, isn't she? Kind of brings a tear to the old eye. It does. Is her intel intelligence affected at all by the cerebral palsy? No, she's as smart as a whip. She remembered my name only meeting me from two minutes before. 
Isn't that nice? In fact, that's the interesting thing that I found about cerebral palsy when I worked in the telethon last weekend is that these children are often um, more intelligent than the average. And you wouldn't think so because they seem disabled, because physically they are, but they're very bright mm -hmm. young kids. Well, they try doubly as hard to do things mm -hmm. and listen and pay attention. Mm -hmm. How does it affect uh, Krista's parents' relationship? She mentioned that she gets depressed, that it's very draining. I should think that would might take a toll on a relationship. Well, despite what you much might think, their marriage is stronger. They're fighting hard together to help the opportunities for Krista mm -hmm. and to improve her chances when she becomes a young adult and grows up and has all the responsibilities of growing up. What kinds of hopes can they have for her at this point? What do they think Well, they're she hoping be able to... for everything at this point because her progress has improved so much. When she was just born, she didn't move at all, and now she's walking mm -hmm. sort of with a little bit of assistance. She's starting to walk. So now they're hoping for the world. They're not giving up, which I think is just tremendous. How did she affect their decision to have another baby? Well, they've had another one, and all is fine. Oh, and they're thinking about another one. They really are. Yeah. Isn't it wonderful what can be done with children, the cerebral palsy children, <coughs> excuse me, and all of the disabled children, but she's a very special mother, isn't she? I'm not she's so sure that patience. all of us could do that. I don't think I could have that kind of patience, but she's so determined, and she really loves, you know, with such intensity and vigor, I often wonder if I could do the same yeah. thing. It's amazing. Thank you for Thank that you. story. <laughs> your comments and opinions on any of the stories you see on Vancouver Women are very welcome. It's your views that let us know what's important to Vancouver women and men. Write down your comment and send it to Vancouver Woman, 180 West 2nd Avenue. The postal code is V5Y3T9. And we'll be back in just a moment. You're watching Vancouver Woman on VU13, and when we return, a look at how masks are being used to help actors adopt new personalities and learn their craft. If you've had too much to drink and then need to get home, it's going to cost you a quarter to phone a friend for a ride, a little more for the bus, still more to take a cab. But if you gamble and try to drive while impaired, it can really cost you. Your license, six months in jail, a $2,000 fine. And if you have an accident, your insurance company will make you pay back every penny. The costs could wipe you out for life. But it's up to you. CFMI FM1. Every breath you take. CFMI FM1, the rhythm of Vancouver, wherever you are. CFMI FM1, Greater Vancouver Radio. Catch our beat, CFMI FM1. Sunday, January 20th, the Miami Dolphins meet the San Francisco 49ers for Super Bowl 19. Turn to us for the pregame preview at 1. Game time at 3, BU 13. Dad, I'm old enough to handle it. I'm not saying that you're not, son. Good luck, son. Thanks, Dad. I'd love you. Milk. Don't stop now. Entries blown out prices on all remaining 84 room groups during our gigantic half yearly clearance. This eight piece living room suite is on sale for an incredibly low $5.88. The set includes this sofa and chair, plus three tables, two lamps, and a beautiful framed print. All eight pieces for one low price, just $588 or $32.70 a month. Prices don't get any lower than this. So what are you waiting for? Shop Grand Tree's half yearly clearance sale today. Smart buyers agree it's Grand Tree. Welcome back to Vancouver Woman. In many societies, the use of masks to illustrate legend and pass on history is an accepted tradition. But more recently in Canada, masks are being used as a teaching aid for actors. To tell us about the history of masks and acting, plus give us a demonstration, is movement coach and teacher Ellen Pierce. Here she is with Michelle. Thanks, Maria. Welcome, Ellen. Thank you. I'm looking at this mask that you're yeah. holding in your hands. It's so beautiful. Do you know, I wonder about the correlation between teaching and masks, though. It, it, it doesn't seem a, a necessarily direct thing to be doing. What, Why to be, use masks? For teaching actors? Yes. Because I think it's the most... Actors do everything by intangible ways. I mean, how do you find a character? For once in your life, somebody hands you this and says, here is your character. 
And the mask itself has, has an, an energy, or just by looking at it, you see certain things. And when you put the mask on, you know how to move. You know what to do with that mask. You begin to know. It's like you follow your intuition. If you hear a certain piece of music, you know how to move to it. All right? Well, this makes you move or work in a certain way. But why use a mask? Why not just use makeup? Why, why the, the additional thickness? Oh, well, there are two things I feel about that. One is just the direct experience of the actor or the performer. It's tangible. It's something coming from outside yourself, and so you've got to listen to it. Okay, you can't just get away with, I want to do what I feel comfortable with. You've got to pay attention to it because it's other than me. Okay, so there's that. You're dealing with it like a text, like a script. The second thing is that by engaging oneself with the technique of playing a mask and with making masks, I think that over one's life as an actor, that starts to change, that changed my attitude about myself as, a, as, a, as, as acting being a craft rather than just something, you know, someone phones and says, you know, here's a job, do this. You start to think of yourself as an independent artist with a craft and a technique because you make masks and you relate to them and, 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 and making masks itself is a craft. And so it makes you think of your own work. What was way. your experience then? How did you discover that for yourself? I discovered it because I wanted to do clowning. And I went and, and did a workshop with a man named Richard Pachenko and we had to make masks to become the clown. We had to go through seven, six different masks before we found our clown makeup in order to become a clown. As a way of exploring what's going on in here. You can't give the, what's in here. So, so what did that spark in your imagination? What was it that it did for you and you said, ah, oh, this is great, I must pass this on to other students? Oh, when I started teaching actors, and uh, when I started teaching actors, I found that I wanted them to have that experience that, that they find for themselves by playing the mask. Instead of doing what someone tells them to do, they learn to do what the mask tells them to do. It means you have to ex dig deeper and use your imagination at a, at a, at a greater level. Hmm. So you must have an interesting story about students that have changed through using masks in your classes. Well, I thought about that. Um, one time, I had a mask. It wasn't this one. It's a big, round, sort of happy, um, pink face, all right? And I had 11, nine, nine apprentice actors. And the one actor who was most like that face said, oh, I want that one. And I thought, damn. You know, Peter chose this mask. And I thought, oh, darn, he chose the mask that's just like himself. And I looked him right in the eye just before he went to play it, this big, beautiful, happy, round moon face that looks like a happy mask. And I said, there's another side to this. Mm. you know, find it. <laughs> and he and went, I oh. went, cross my fingers, because, you know, I don't like to push, but I knew I was so worried that he'd just play himself again in the mask. What happened was, when he wore that mask, can I tell the whole story? Please. Okay. The story of the, the, the scenario was waving goodbye to someone you love, and this big round moon face, and Peter acting the way he often is, just a, li a little bit bigger, you know, followed everyone else down to the dock to do the imaginary waving goodbye, and hung around at the end, and hung around at the end, and kept playing this kind of jovial character, and just at the last minute, this actor who was always cheerful, you know, always the good guy, always da 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 like that, suddenly started to cry in the mask. I mean, it was something he'd never done before, and I would never have pushed him to do it, but he needed that other side of himself. To think that it can bring someone out that yeah. much. You have this he mask and mask. a couple of others. Yeah. Can, you, can you show us sure. what the transition that happens in sure. here? Yes. Now this first one is supposed to be shy, is it not? Oh.
Amazing. I can't believe the difference, the transition in your body. Oh, what is it? not me, is it? It's not you. <laughs> but it's it is. The feeling inside. Yeah. Well, what's that like for you? The feeling inside is like, it, it is like hearing music or you get used to it. You know, the first time I played a mask, all I felt was that I should sort of walk a bit sideways <gasps> or something and I followed that instinct. And it evolved yeah. so much. Yeah. The, Ellen, thank you so much. You're Alan very Pierce. welcome. Okay. <laughs> Vancouver Woman will be back after these messages with more of the songs of singer-songwriter Alison Hogan. Stay with us. We said test dishwasher all against your regular brand and give us your honest opinion. All is super. You read the label and you think, well, we'll see if it does the job. And all does the job. It's an honest product. It does what it says it's going to do. All my dishes come out clean, very shiny, very satiny smooth finish. Well, I wouldn't use anything else in my dishwasher. I don't think there is a product on the market today that can get my dishes any cleaner than all. All does it all. Cut by intricate cut, it becomes the most valuable piece of metal you could own. A key. And when it's ready to protect a part of your world, don't throw that security away. Protected with TV Vet secret mini tags, they can speed your lost keys safely back to you. When you receive your tags in the mail, please send a donation. TV Vet secret mini tags. Use them, count on them, support them. Tomorrow on First News Week, Stephen Fonio crosses into Manitoba saying he'll be home soon. First News Week, Saturday at 5 on BU 13. Your wedding day, the most magical day of your life. If 1985 is the year that you become a bride, then you'll want to be a part of the 6th Annual Wedding Fair at the Hyatt Regency. There'll be fashion shows, thousands of dollars in prizes, including a honeymoon trip to Hawaii, exhibits, displays, and lots of helpful advice that will make your special day even more perfect. Vancouver's largest bridal show, the Hyatt Regency's Wedding Fair, Sunday, January 20th. Pick up your registration and invitation today. What's that you're knitting with? Oh, a wonderful new yarn from Ventex. Ventex? Well, that's man-made. Oh, it's their new generation of fine yarns. So soft and light. Soft? 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 Soft! And just look at these beautiful colors. And no dye lots. Look for the new generation of fine quality yarns from Ventex. Soft. Here once again to sing one of her own songs is Alison Hogan with Lonely Girl.
Saturday night in the city All dressed up, she's got nowhere to go from here Saturday night in the city She's walking in the rain to try to hide the tears Nobody told her, only the lonely play this game Nobody told her she'd be just one more face with no name She's a lonely girl, she's got nobody she can run to Ooh, she's a lonely girl, she's only doing what she's got to Saturday night at the movies Sweet sensations with the boys in the back seat Saturday night at the movies Taught her temptation Now she's walking the back beat Nobody told her Only the lonely play this game Nobody told her She'd be just one more face with no name She's a lonely girl She's got nobody she can run to Watches the cars and every now and then one slows down Saturday night in the city She wipes away her tears He lays his money down Nobody told her Only the lonely play this game Nobody told her She'd be just one more face with no name She's a lonely Morgenthaler is at the top of the news in Canada and the abortion issue is no less volatile in the States as members of pro-choice groups are planning to hold all-night vigils at abortion clinic, clinics, excuse, excuse me, fearing that the anniversary of the legalization of abortion may bring out anti-abortion terrorists. Now members will be holding vigils this weekend in 25 abortion centers in 18 different states. Now President Judy Goldsmith says in addition to the sites selected for demonstrations this weekend, her members will also be in the clinics Tuesday night through Wednesday morning, the actual 12th anniversary of the Supreme Court decision. Terrorism grows and feeds on its successes. If they are not challenged, if someone does not stand up to them at some point and say this far and no farther, they will have a greater likelihood of success and we are absolutely determined to see that that does not happen. Now leaders say the targeted clinics will be well lit and clearly marked to indicate there are people inside. But some leaders of the pro-choice movement are not lining up behind the now demonstration. I think on the level of personal safety that I would be unwilling to sit in the clinic that weekend and that I would be unwilling to encourage any of our members to do it. Some federal and local law enforcement officials are not thrilled with NOW's idea, but Federal Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms Director Stephen Higgins says he wasn't about to tell NOW to stay out of the clinics. I, I'd rather not get involved with, uh, in any kind of uh, argument with NOW about whether that's the most effective way they could, could uh, take action, but it, it just creates some concern from us because, uh, you know, we uh, were 
you know, we're concerned that something could happen. Although many family planning centers and clinics that offer abortions are welcoming the NOW demonstration with open arms, like this one in Atlanta, Georgia, others across the country have been less than receptive, fearing that the NOW demonstration may actually attract violence to their clinics. Other clinic operators wonder aloud if the NOW demonstration will actually work. It may stop the violence in the next weekend or the next few days, but they wonder about next week or next month. Canada's skyrocketing divorce rate has clogged the courts and is making lawyers rich. After the break, we look at the alternative offered by BC's Family Mediation Service. When you buy any McCain product, you know you're getting terrific quality. What you can also get is a chance to fly Air Canada to a deluxe holiday for two at one of the fabulous Princess Hotels in beautiful Bermuda. Just cut the name from any McCain package and send it to this address. Enter as often as you like. The contest ends March 1st. Any McCain package can turn into a fabulous Princess Hotels holiday in beautiful Bermuda. McCain's family of fine products are available at IGA. Do you know you now have two more reasons to use Milan cream soap? First, Milan now comes in four new colorful dispensers. With or without their flowery wrapping, these nice and attractive dispensers will match in harmony with the styles and colors of your kitchen and bathroom. Secondly, Milan now contains aloe vera added to jojoba. More creamy and velvety, this new improved formula leaves your skin even softer and silkier. Yes, you now have two more reasons to buy the one and only Milan cream soap, sold in four new decorative dispensers. Young, beautiful women compete for the title of Miss Teen USA. Don't miss this special presentation. The Miss Teen USA pageant, Tuesday at 9 on BU13. what the critics are saying about the LG 73 World's Worst Movie Festival. Television at its worst. Putrid. Garbage. Bloody awful. Rancid. The LG 73 World's Worst Movie Festival, this week featuring Billy the Kid versus Dracula, King of Con Island, and Silent Scream. It all starts Saturday night, immediately after Saturday Night Live, only on VU 13. Makes a great Christmas gift, too. One out of three marriages in Canada ends in divorce these days, and BC's courtrooms are full to overcrowding with families in dispute. The legal bills for both parties can run into the thousands. As a result, the Attorney General has set up a family mediation service to help family and marriage partners come to an agreement before they enter the courtroom. With Maria is Henry Todan Chabot, a family court counselor here to talk about his role in mediating family disputes. Welcome. Aside from saving money for the individuals with lawyer costs, what are some other advantages to coming to you, a, a family court counselor, rather than going directly to lawyers? Well, the first thing is, of course, we are neutral. I think that's a very important mm -hmm. thing to recognize. Our main role is to try and mediate, to try and help people to see that in spite of the adversary situation in which they are, they have an opportunity to come to the census without immediately having to go and get court action. Mm -hmm. In a sense, though, you're taking business away from lawyers. Does that no, pose we're not. any problem? No, we're not lawyers. We often get referrals from lawyers mm -hmm. because they sometimes feel that it would be far more advantageous for their client to have mediation. So it's not that we're taking away business from lawyers. We are not lawyers. And you're not a marriage counselor, really, because by the time people come to you, have they already decided that they don't want to reconcile? Not necessarily. Really? Not necessarily. But my primary object is not to be a marriage counselor and reconcile, but to conciliate. Mm -hmm. And I think there is a difference. Just explain the difference. The difference by uh, reconciling is to try and bring people back together, mm -hmm. whereas conciliating is to say, we agree to disagree. And therefore, there are certain things that we have to agree on 
to do in order that we can continue in our life without making it worse than it already is. Some people who come to you, though, must be pretty angry and pretty frustrated for a marriage to reach a point where they want to break up. They often can't communicate. What's that like for you? Can you describe what the couples are like? Well, they're all different, you know. You cannot yes. say that one case is uh, identical to another. So there are people who come to you who are amicable? who are, oh, can yes. talk yes. And, and just need you there we to help We often uh, manage to mediate between people. We don't necessarily have to bring them together, mm -hmm. but uh, I can talk to the one party and then talk to the other party, and each gives me their views and their, uh, let's say, their list of, of what they would like, and I mediate on that, and we can come up with an agreement, and we can get an out-of-court settlement known as a consent. How about the more difficult cases, when people come in there and they can hardly stand being in the same room? Well, as I say, they don't necessarily have to be together in the same oh, room. Oh, I see. That's the answer. Mm -hmm. We are going to ask people now if you have any questions you would like to ask uh, Henry Todin Chabot. The telephone number is 872-6631, and he asks that you be rather specific is that correct That's with the right, questions because, and, and that yeah. you're not a lawyer? That's right. What are some of the most common reasons that you see that marriages are, are breaking down? There's so many different mm -hmm. reasons, you know. I think basically it's a matter of communication. People have not learned to communicate before they entered into that relationship. So are you suggesting that maybe if there was some sort of pre-marriage counseling that that would help? Uh, you know, people in love don't want to be told anything. They are in love. Mm -hmm. And you don't want anybody to tell you, now watch out for this, watch out for that. But the thing is that if people are so serious about making that commitment, they should give each other an opportunity to say, uh, these are the areas of life that we have to share. Mm -hmm. And what in these areas of life that we are sharing are the same and which are not the same? And how can we uh, basically come to some consensus and your experience is that people come to see you and that that really never went on? They just fell in love and said, let's get married and live happily ever after? Often, yes, often. I wouldn't say it's a uh, across-the-board rule, but uh, it often is that. I suppose sometimes, too, people change, that maybe they made that sort of an agreement, say, 20 years ago, and now things have changed and people have changed. Do you find irreconcilable differences or changing people, as a reason for People divorce? grow in different ways. You see, uh, a man may grow uh, his way, a woman may go, mm -hmm. grow her way, and, and uh, they have not anticipated that they would come to a point of parting of the ways. Mm -hmm. The intent in getting married is always a good one. I mean, nobody gets married by, with the idea of saying, uh, I'm going to split. Mm -hmm. What are some of the specific areas that you mediate for people, things that they need you to help them work around? Um, custody of children, uh, visitation rights known as access, mm -hmm. uh, support payments, what can a, a man uh, afford to pay in order to support children, this kind of thing. Can you give us an example of a couple who have come in to see you, they really don't know where to begin, they are uh, getting a divorce, they, they've decided that much, they have children and they have property, the property is no problem but the children is. They, they, don't know where to begin with that. What do you do? Well, now, in family court that I basically deal with, there are certain limitations. Mm -hmm. Family court can essentially only deal with custody, access, and maintenance. Mm -hmm. If it is anything to do with real estate or property, litigation, discovery, it's all a matter for the Supreme Court. So with the family court, where would you begin with this couple? There they are sitting in front of you. No, as I told you before, it is not necessarily that I have the couple. Okay. One of the parties usually makes the inquiry mm, oh, by phoning an intake worker at family court. And then family court intake makes out an intake form. Mm -hmm. And they send it to the area office where the couple resides, or one of the parties resides who's made the inquiry. And then we pick it up from there. I see. We get in touch with the inquiring party. Because sometimes they don't want you to communicate immediately with the other party. So you have to give them a fair chance. 
Okay, let's pick up this discussion when we come back after the break and find out how this couple can reconcile their differences before they go to court. Once again, the telephone number is 872-6631 if you have any questions about family disputes or, or about how... Before you go to court, you'd like to get some information from Henry Todan Chabot. We'll be back after this break. With divorce statistics so high, you or someone you know may have a marriage in trouble or dispute. If you have a problem or question you feel our guest could help you with, our phone lines will be open after the break at 872-6631. Every year in Canada, heart attacks kill more people than any other single cause, and over half the victims die before they can receive any professional medical attention. Maybe you could have helped. Learn to recognize the signals of a heart attack and the simple life-saving skills of CPR you could bring a stopped heart back to life. Because when it comes to fighting heart attacks, knowing what to do is half the battle. The Pulse of Life Society is endorsed by the BC Association of Broadcasters. TV Week, the only complete television magazine in BC. Only TV Week magazine gives you all the listings for the networks, independent stations, local cable stations, the converter channels, and pay TV, only TV Week has them all. If it's on TV, it's in TV Week magazine. Get next week's issue today. Saturday at 3, turn to us for Countdown to Super Bowl. What have we seen in the past? What do we look for in game time? The Super Bowl preview on BU 13. We asked Virginia Reed if she thought her denture cleanser could clean away cherry stain. Probably would. What about a stain of cherry and tea? Probably it would not. Or a triple stain of cherry, tea, and even coffee? I don't think it would. Watch Extra Strength Effordent work on a triple stain of cherry, tea, and even coffee with Effordent's powerful blue action formula. It cleaned beautifully. In between each tooth, I'm going to switch to Effordent. Extra Strength Effordent removes even stubborn stains between teeth. At rent a -Rec, you can rent quality, dependable cars and trucks at the practical price of just $8.95 a day. At rent a -Rec, you won't believe the selection. Cars, trucks, and vans always at the practical price. Coast to coast, we are the practical alternative for car rental. At Welcome back to Vancouver Woman. We are taking your calls now at 872-6631, and my guest is Family Court Counselor Henry Todin Chabot. We'll go right to the phones. There are people who would like right. to ask you a few questions. Mm -hmm. Good evening. You're on Vancouver Woman. Did you have a question? Yes. Um, I would like to end a marriage after 20 years, but my husband wouldn't move out of the house. What should I do? The best thing for you to do would be to phone up Family Court at 255-5131, Ask to speak to an intake worker on family and explain your case. And they will take all your particulars and refer you to the local office where it will be picked up and a family court counselor will be in touch with you. Thank you. We'll take another call. Good evening. Did you have a question? Yes, I do. My Hi. name is Karen and I will present you with a hypothetical situation. Thank you. Someone who is fairly conservative, all right? meet someone who is fairly extravagant. He or she suggests improvement, uh, and they get married, uh, she suggests improvement. Could that be a contributing factor toward a divorce in itself? Would you stay on the line, please? We might want to ask you a question in response to your question. I think essentially what you have to think of is your communication with that person. If you have not been able to communicate your differences with each other, you are leaving yourself wide open for future problems. Mm -hmm. Okay, the communication in itself is actually quite good. I'm not speaking about myself, it is a relative, all right? Uh, she has been through a divorce before. The marriage was not workable. She has met somebody who that she is in love with. I want to see that work for her more than anything else in the world. The problem being is that my sister is quite high strung. And she depends more on, on outward thinking, other people, what other people think. Uh, the man that she is going to be married to again, uh, 
things like wearing an earring in his ear or the extravagant clothing that he wears. She loves him dearly, but she wishes he was more conservative, and I'm just afraid that this might come toward a divorce later on in life. Thank you. That's a, that's a very good point. We think sometimes that just by getting married, those things will change. Now, wearing an earring on the surface seems like not very much, but really it's saying a lot more, isn't it, than just, I've got an earring in my ear. Now, what you have to remember is that if you are already beforehand aware of uh, the things that you differ on, and you think that once you're married, these things will change, maybe you will find one day that you have a rude awakening, mm -hmm. because it just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And Don't think, fool yourself. Yes, and therefore, I, as I said earlier on, the best thing to do is to communicate, to talk to one another, and get these differences out before you get into a situation where, where you can't back out. Perhaps from. it'll end, it would result in not getting married, but perhaps that would be the best route in some cases. It might be. Yes. Let's take another call. Good evening. Did you have a question? Yes, my question yes. is uh, this. I. Uh, was divorced my, from my wife four years ago in great bitterness. Uh, we resolved some of the problems of poverty, but my wife now, who is a Catholic, wants my child to go to a Catholic private school. I am not a Catholic. Uh, how do we go about resolving that difference without going to the court? Thank you. I think, so. what you have to remember is when you have married a Catholic, as you put it, you knew before you entered into that marriage that the rules of the Catholic Church are quite strict. The fact that you were married to a Catholic woman perhaps caused already some uh, hesitation, let's say, on the part of the Catholic Church at the time of your marriage. Now, that you are married to this lady and that you are faced with a problem is something that the Catholic Church perhaps will deal with in a different light than the judiciary would. And uh, in respect to your wife's feelings, you have to consider both uh, ways. I would suggest maybe that you take an opportunity to uh, call a family court counselor or get in touch with one who may have understanding on both the legal and the spiritual side and discuss this matter. Because I think that would be far better than trying to bulldoze your way out or through. And you have to consider also since you have the child that you're t referring to, that it is in the best interest of the child not to be involved in your communication breakdown. And often it takes a third party to be involved in that discussion because with each other you go around in circles. Well, you have finished actually talking to one another and somebody who is neutral, in the middle, can understand perhaps both sides mm -hmm. and, and therefore give you a feedback that you wouldn't get by talking to the party that you are in dispute with. Someone like you, Henry Todin Chabot, thank you for coming by this evening. You're welcome. Here's Lois. Your comments and opinions on any of the stories you see on Vancouver Woman are very welcome. It's your views that let us know what's important to Vancouver women and men. Write down your comment and send it to Vancouver Woman, 180 West 2nd Avenue, Postal Code V5Y, 3T9. We'll be back in a moment. Coming up on Monday, we start another week of Vancouver at 7. Some of the people we'll meet include the producer of the new movie, Passage to India, Lord Brayburn, a man who's also produced such classics as Death on the Nile and The Mirror Cracked. Our newsmaker Monday is Avital Sharovsky, who's campaigning for the release of her husband, a jailed Soviet dissident. And Crime Stoppers is here with another reenactment of a major crime the police need your help to solve. That's Monday at 7 on Vancouver. We'll discover the answer to the question, when is a wall not what it seems? The illusion is art when we return. With the price of everything in the grocery store going up, a lot of you found you didn't have enough money left for a box of all. But we're doing something about it. 
I'm Alan Ray, president of Lever Detergents. We've come up with a new formula that makes all an even better laundry detergent and lets us reduce the price dramatically. So if you've been doing without all, now it's back within your budget. Better all at a better price. We're bringing all back to you. We're bringing all back to you. Now the sale begins at home. The January home sale with low prices on the Brute Heavy Duty Polycorn Broom. Ideal for indoors or out, $7.77 each. Melt snow and ice from porch or steps with Nutrite Anti Icer, just $3.79 each. And choose the workhorse hard working flashlight from Rayovac with bonus batteries only $5.99. the action of Miami Vice tonight at 9 on VU 13. Sydney's spending the weekend with some friends in Caribou. He's packing some Tetley tea bags because they enjoy Tetley too. The reason they insist on Tetley is because they know beyond doubt that Tetley makes the tea bag that lets all the flavor flood up. It's these 2,000 perforations that let Tetley's flavor flood through. Golden and not bitter is the Tetley tea we brew. My friends were most concerned that I didn't forget the tea. Although you can buy Tetley up there this weekend, the tea's on me. Tetley tea. Better tea bag, better tea. Joe Montana, San Francisco 49ers. He guided his team to a Super Bowl victory in January 1982. Dan Marino, Miami Dolphins. Young, confident, the quickest release in the East. Sunday afternoon, these two superstars meet at the historic Stanford Stadium, Palo Alto, California, for Super Bowl 19. Turn to us for the game preview at 1. Super Bowl at 3 with Frank Gifford's play-by-play and expert analysis from Don Meredith and Joe Theismann. At 7, stay with us for 60 minutes here on BU 13. Welcome back to Vancouver Woman. Design